In this video, I'm going to be sharing 12 of my favorite tips in attracting larger clients. And this has been proven by our organization and multiple people that we work with. Some of these may apply to you, some of them won't, but I ensure you one or two of these will definitely help you in working with bigger clients and with bigger, larger clients, you get better case studies, you can charge more money, you can make more profits, your business just becomes better because you're working with more sophisticated and more successful people, okay? So I'm gonna go through these 12 tips and give an explanation a little bit deeper on each one, okay? So um, most people actually don't target larger clients. A lot of people are targeting below 10 plus employees because they think these organizations will be easier to work with, easier to get in um, front of, and easier to sell to because they're smaller than larger clients. That is actually categorically incorrect. It might be easier to get in contact with them, but it's definitely gonna be harder to sell to them because they have less money and they're probably more reluctant to invest in growth projects in comparison to larger organizations that have more money and are used to investing in new staff, new team members, multiple different agencies, etc. So it will just increase the size of the organization who you're going after and do a little bit more targeting rather than just say sending out lots of cold emails. Do more personalized campaigns to the people who you actually want to work with, such as Dream 100 campaigns and really focus on the type of people who you want to work with. Because for me, one good client is equal to you know, 10 average ones. And my God, I, I don't want bad clients. So really focus on those types of clients who you want to work with. The more sophisticated the customer, the larger the customer, the likelihood the relationship will be better. Then number two, customize your proposals and plans. So do not do a cookie cutter approach where you just give them you know, the, the same proposal that you pitch to everyone else 3k a month and it's a month by month contract and it just looks generic and they could price compare or go to anyone for the services that you'll offer really spend time on creating a custom plan for them that's adapted for them and it's not that you're changing your whole product all that you're doing is putting together almost like an implementation plan is if you were already working with the client if you invest this time beforehand much more likely to close the deal um, a close a higher deal and get that client very confident from the start. It's very important in the first 90 days when you're working with the client that you give them the confidence, but to be able to get to that 90 days, they need to be really confident in what they're getting in the process. So this is why we create custom plans for all of our clients. We look at their market, we look at their targets, we look at their pricing, and we put together a custom plan for each one. Do more than send cold emails. So if you want to get in touch with people, you know, like I said before, you know, use multiple different methods to get in touch with the people who you want to get in touch with. You know, don't just send cold emails and say, oh well, no one's responding back, that's it. You know, call positive responses, ask for introductions, you know, connect with them on LinkedIn, send them videos. You know, we had uh, multiple people do this and they, you know, increase the response rate to 50% response rate by doing some personalized outreach. And this isn't just about changing the first line, it's actually doing some research and reaching out specifically to people. So do more than that and get in touch. This investment at the start is gonna be well worth it for your business at the end because you're gonna be working with excellent customers. And two or three excellent customers, trust me, can make you 50 to 70K per month, okay? So it's really worth the investment at the start. You have to be prepared for a longer sales process. So when you're charging higher ticket and working with larger clients, the scarcity urgency bonus tactics tend not to work as well. So this, is, this tends to play on people's emotions and the larger the client, the less emotional they will usually be about bringing on a service because it's normally multiple stakeholders that are looking at the project so it's a much more objective sale. So you will have multiple meetings with the, the prospect and then the prospect goes to speak to their team about it. They come back, ask questions, risks and stuff like that. So one of our best clients, it probably took me about five months of you know meeting him every month or so. He wasn't quite ready. He was sharing a bit of information to actually bring him on board. He's now one of our best clients and their project is scaling up and it's making way more profits than some of the ones that come online straight away because they were more sort of desperate for our services, okay? So you've gotta be prepared to put in the yards and go through the questions. Questions aren't bad. It's actually good that you get a lot out in the open at the start because if you get it right at the start, it's likely to be right at the end. 
when making your proposal, make it very logic based. So yes, we want to tie in some emotions of things that you know they might be feeling of bringing on staff, wasting time, getting them to feel down, but you want to really make it clear in terms of step one, step two, step three, step four, this is what we're going to do, this is why we're doing it, this is the evidence in doing it. It needs to be quite scientific, it needs to be quite evidence-based, it needs to be logical, because they need to fully believe it. A confused mind always says no, so you want to make it very clear in terms of what you're going to do and why you're going to do it. It doesn't mean you're going to tell them every single little thing about it, but they need to fully understand the concept and why you're doing it, and that you're the right person to do it. Obviously, use your own evidence if you have it, but if you don't have it, you can also leverage third-party evidence to show them how it works within the market. You can't claim that that's your own work, but you can use it as evidence that these sort of processes work. It sounds very simple, but be professional at all times. You know, don't get dragged into you know, negative, calling people, you know, being too pally with the client, calling people mate, bro, stuff like that. It does depend on the industry, but more sophisticated clients want to trust their money with professionals. It's why you know, in banks, people wear suits um, for, <laughs> for years because that's the people who are looking after your money. So if you went into your bank and you're like, you know, I'm depositing you know, a million and that guy's sitting in a snapback in a pair of sneakers with ripped jeans on, you know, you're probably thinking, mm, perception is reality. And that's, that's just about clothing. But it all in clothing is really one small part of it. You know, dress appropriately. I'm not wearing a suit, but I'm I'm, I'm wearing a, a jumper that looks appropriate for the types of people who I'm speaking to directly. So, what I would challenge you to do is really, when you're understanding your niche, you know, wear almost something you know similar to them, and it's not mimicking, it's not fake, but you know, people will feel comfortable if you are a professional. Yes, you see these billionaires who walk around in sneakers and jeans and stuff like that. But they have a lot more evidence than social proof. They are billionaires. You know, you are a professional, you're early in your career, you don't want any seeds of doubt within your clients or prospects' mind. But you know, the clothing is just one part, but how you hold yourself, how you conduct yourself, responding to emails on time, even if you don't know how to respond to the email, just let them know I've received your email, I'm reviewing with the team, I'll feed back to you tomorrow. You know, like always be professional, always stay on point, don't lose your professionalism. And if a client is rude, you can politely just say, look, I, I actually don't think this is, this is a good fit. You don't need to get angry back with them or act unprofessional in any way. So, you know, being professional and increasing your brand reputation is only going to be beneficial for you. Positioning. So positioning is another key part of what will help you to get these sales over the line. You need to get your positioning like almost it's you're so unique, they can work with you or no one else and they need you to help overcome their unique specific problem. And they will only believe this if you niche down and build them a customized proposal and a plan specifically for their needs because they're not gonna get that level of service from anyone else. Everyone else is just doing a cookie cutter approach, a couple of grand a month, this is the services, off you go. You're putting together a proper partnership plan and positioning yourselves as one of one so they feel like they either go with you or they don't do anything, okay? And that is why positioning in your niche is so important. Then we want to focus on the results and the experience of the client. So initially I was very results focused in terms of our organization because I held very good relationships with the clients. But as I started stepping out of some of the client projects and handing it over to team members as our business grew, what I recognized is some of those relationships dropped and there started to be some challenges within the client projects even though the results were improving, okay? So why would that happen? Because the relationship's gone. So client will bring you on to do something, but they will keep you of how to think. So the client experience from when they first engage with you is super important for those first 90 days. I'm gonna do another video on this of how to retain a client, but those first 90 days is crucially important. Setting the communication pace and frame is essentially important because you need clarity. Most relationships fall down due to poor communication so you need that clarity at the start and you also need the frame if you don't need to work with them you want to work with them to support but they're not your only option and that's really important because when you do start working with them you want to have a good level of control of the project not from an ego perspective because you will need that to get them very good results so from the start you need to be like you know we're, we're partners in this we're going to help you to achieve your success you know but you know it's very important that you 
or equal to them. You're not below them, you're not a supplier, you are a partner. Never act overwhelmed or too busy for your partners. This is something where our team members have actually made that mistake. Intuitively, I don't do that because I've managed large client accounts for many years, but newer people coming into the business, when I first started out, I probably did this. Client asks how you are, you say, you know, I'm so busy. Or, you know, you tell them about all these things, what makes you sound busy and focused elsewhere. That's gonna be really bad for you because they don't think that you're focused on their project. Your client should feel like they're the only client in the world. And it's not that you're gonna let them run amok and run all over you and take up all your time. But when you're on a meeting with them, stay focused. You know, when you're responding to them, get back to them in a timely manner. Like I said, even if you don't have time, you can send in a note, say, I'm gonna get back to you on this at this time because I'm doing this, this, and this. And that's super important. You know, some of our team members, our more junior team members, have actually you know, shared with the client how busy we are as a business. Clients don't like that, especially say, for example, even if the results suffer for a couple of days, and you know that can happen in marketing quite easy, they'll be like, well, all these focus on all these other projects and that's why our results are suffering, stuff like that. You just don't want that. They, you want them to think you know, you're fully focused on them and nothing else matters in the world. Another part of positioning is you want to focus on growing their business rather than just the money, okay? So their business is more important to you than the money. So their case study, their evidence, their social proof, you are not just in this for the money. And I would say to our partners, an excellent case study is gonna make me way more money than the monthly fees you're paying. The fees that you're paying are gonna help us to fund the project, to grow the project, but we are gonna get the percentage of the upside, which is going to increase our profits as an organization. And I try to keep that quite clear and transparent, and clients seem to really respect that. The final point is do more or do something different to the people within the market. So what you'll start to see is people who make money, they'll be copycats pop up all the time with some, sometimes just literally copying it word for word, and others that take that and do their own spin on it and actually do create true differentiation in a more improved service and they can sometimes take over the people that are doing it well. You know, Alex Becker talks about a lot, you know, take a business model that's working in a niche and use it in another one, okay? And that's why we are sharing the growth partner model because we have it working really well within our niche but we're not gonna focus on all the other niches in the world and build out a service-based business for everyone because we actually wouldn't know how to do that because we're the experts in what we do, we're the experts in growth partner. So we're able to share that. So what I would say is when you're looking at you know, building your offer for your clients, that it has significant differentiation on the front and also the back end. So what I mean by that, you're gonna capture attention on the front end by being different to what's already there. That's why Growth Partner works better than marketing agency. It's different, it's new, it makes more sense. On the, on the front end, you know, it's interesting, but also when the client speaks to you, you can say, look, I'm not just gonna deliver you services, we partner with the best and help them grow significantly. You know, it's something Mosey literally just tweeted about. Um, he spoke about the value in, you know, going with less clients and doing more for them and really growing their business. And that is how we've made the money within our business and got exceptional results. So we're able to share those results to bring on the types of clients who we want rather than we have to, to grow our monthly recurring revenue, which a lot of service-based businesses and agencies are stuck on that roller coaster of having to continue to increase monthly recurring revenue by bringing on new clients. And because of that, client results suffer and you're experiencing churn. So you're kind of up and down, not feeling confident to invest in your business. So these aren't my top 12 tips to attracting large clients. Hope you enjoyed it. If you do want to find out more, please book a call with me or a member of our team and we can share more details of how we've helped people exactly like you become growth partners.